Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where I make videos on femininity and homemaking. So if any of those topics interest you, then please do subscribe below so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So today I wanted to talk about seven feminine personality traits that anyone can cultivate today to become more ladylike and more feminine overall. So I actually did a poll on my Instagram stories on whether people wanted to see this first or a clean with me and this got the most votes so this is going up today but I'm still going to do the clean with me so that will be up in a couple of days but I just want to say thank you to anyone who did vote on my Instagram stories because I actually really really wanted to film this video today. <laughs> if you want to follow me on Instagram for more content on femininity and homemaking then I'll put my little at here if I can do that in editing <laughs> so that you can follow me on there and you can then vote in any upcoming polls as well. So I wanted to make today's video because I have been watching a lot of content on YouTube in the past six months on femininity and I found a lot of it is amazing information but I think it's so important to note that the most important thing before you get wrapped up in, in everything else that's hard to change about yourself, the most important thing is about how you treat people and who you are inside as a person. If you can have these things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, then you are no doubt gonna be a person who emits feminine energy everywhere you go. And not only that, but you're just gonna be a good person who people want to be around. So without talking too much, I'm gonna get into the feminine personality traits that you can cultivate today. So the first one I wanna talk talk about is a British favourite and that is manners. There's a reason why manners are drilled into us from an early age and that's because it affects how people feel around us, how comfortable people are around us and it stops us upsetting anyone or being offensive in awkward situations. So the basic manners are obviously please and thank you. And I know it sounds so simple, but in today's society, we seem just to forget to say thank you to people, especially those that we love the most. So we see so many wives and husbands just treat each other like they're passing ships in the night and they never take time to actually be thankful for one another. And that could be something so simple as just thanking someone who does the dishes. <laughs> it doesn't have to be this crazy thing where you need to go out and buy roses every day, but just saying thank you and showing appreciation is so important in today's society where we all seem to be running around fast paced and we have very little time to be thankful for anything. Other basic manners include just thinking of other people so if you're on a busy bus and there is someone elderly or pregnant who might need to sit down more than you then be the first person to offer up your seat. Don't wait to see if anyone else is going to do it first. I see this so often in today's society that people are so quick to judge other people in that we might be on a busy bus and we'll sat down and an elderly lady will come on the bus and we'll be looking at everyone like why is no one getting up out of their seat and offering this lady a seat when you're a person who is sat down yourself so try and look at yourself first and try to ingrain those manners in yourself that you were taught for such a young age and just relearn them and make sure that you're doing them in everyday life the next thing I want to talk about is having immovable morals. So we all think that we've got morals, we all think that we're strict on those morals and they can never be changed. But I hear so many people say, well I have this moral but if this situation occurred then I would do this. So I'm going to use cheating as a, an example, so cheating in a relationship. So you hear so many women say, I would never cheat, cheating is the worst thing you can do. And then always in the same breath or in in the same day they'll just completely contradict themselves and say okay I would never cheat but I totally understand how women who feel neglected go out and try and get attention of other men so you see how that is making exceptions and I think it's so important to have morals that are just immovable and nothing can change them nothing that people do to us or treat us can make us change obviously there's exceptions to that if you're in any physical danger but I think we've we've just got too soft or most on our morals and there's almost like we don't have anything to follow and in previous times religion has been at the center of so many different societies whereas we seem to have lost touch with that so it's important to have something to replace it I'm not saying everyone needs to be religious but it's just important to have morals that almost replace 
base that guide that no matter what you're not going to go back on. So things like that include obviously not cheating in your relationship, putting other people's needs before you, not gossiping, not being a bully, just not being all those nasty things in life no matter what. There's no exceptions and there's no excuses. Just know your immovable morals, know what's the right thing to do and always do it. The next point I want to talk about is forgiveness. So nowadays we see people who really hold on to any hurt that people have caused them in the past and find it really difficult to forgive and all this causes is for people to be bitter and there's a saying that hurt people hurt people and it's so true if you're hurting yourself you're more likely to go out and hurt other people so the best thing that you can do for both yourself and society is to heal from those wounds and the only way to do that is through forgiveness. Now this sort of does a 180 when you put two and two together of that saying again that hurt people hurt people so if you have been hurt by someone there's a good chance that that person was unhappy themselves and that they had been through something themselves so the way to forgive them is by understanding what led them to make the decision to hurt you in the first place so for example you might have had an upbringing that was far less than ideal and you might harness some hurt against your mom or your dad for whatever reason now the way to forgive them is maybe looking at their childhood looking at how maybe they were made to feel and accepting the fact that that was the norm for them and they weren't trying to hurt you again there's obviously exceptions to this but going through life harnessing hurt and not forgiving anyone is only going to hurt you in the long run and it's going to make you a very difficult person to be around because all you'll see is negativity and you'll see the negativity in other people and it just becomes a vicious cycle so there is nothing more powerful than just taking a deep breath and deciding to go out of your way to forgive people that have hurt you in the past. The next personality trait that is so important that anyone can cultivate now is self-reflection and this is just looking at yourself in every situation and just being completely honest with yourself about where you might have said something wrong, you may have acted wrong. Nowadays I feel like people make excuses a lot and kind of justify actions that just weren't right and it's so difficult sometimes to self-reflect and admit you're wrong because it is embarrassing and you know you have to put your pride aside in order to admit that you were wrong but self-reflection is the only thing that's going to make you grow in life. So for example if you've had a bit of an argument with your partner because you were full of hormones and you just lashed out sometimes it's easier just to keep going with that argument and the realization that you're wrong might be slowly starting to dawn in but because you've almost pushed so hard it's really difficult to then drop your pride and admit do you know what I'm actually acting a bit crazy now and I'm really sorry <laughs> that's hard to do but it takes a strong person to do that and it takes a feminine person to do that and a soft and gentle woman to admit her mistakes life isn't just a fight about who's right and you don't gain any special prizes for being right all the time in fact all you're gonna do is draw people away from you because who really wants to be around someone who is just constantly right and their opinion is just constantly screamed in your face but someone who can openly admit that their flaws and self-reflect is someone who is going to attract all the best people in life and people who want to bring out more positivity in you. My next point is kindness and empathy. So they're obviously two different personality traits but they do go hand in hand. So kindness is just about putting other people before yourself and I know people know this but I feel like it's quite easy for people to be kind when it's no skin off their nose and it takes no extra effort. What's difficult to do is to be kind when you lose out on something. This can be shown in the most basic everyday thing so for example I know this sounds so silly but I remember being around a girl who we were both taking our makeup off and I ran out of face wipes and she had a full pack and I asked to borrow one and she was really really funny about it and it's just always stuck in my mind and I've always just felt like 
that face wipe was probably worth about 2p and can I just side note that I don't use face wipes anymore because they're really bad for your skin but anyway <laughs> kindness should just be something that comes easily to you the more you practice it the more you will just naturally be kind but I think the most important places to practice it is where you really don't feel like being kind or you know it puts you out a little bit so just try and be kind in the everyday that might be having a bag of things that you want to take the charity but you can't really be bothered that day and going to do it anyway because it doesn't matter how you feel you're thinking about the people who need those clothes and the charity that needs that money empathy again is something where you can just utterly put yourself in someone else's shoes so this comes more naturally to some than it does others and I do think there is cases where you can be too empathetic so for me personally I actually did it a year of nursing but I was too empathetic for it I know that sounds ridiculous but basically if someone was having like a needle or a vaccination or something and they were really scared I would almost hyperventilate for them <laughs> and if someone was completely fine with it then I would be completely fine with it so you can almost do that too much to the point where you're not actually comforting the person that you're um, empathizing with because you're almost just stealing their emotions and that was me and it still is to a certain degree I'll see someone crying and I'll just instantly want to cry but having empathy is just about being able to understand people situations even when you've not necessarily been in that situation so you've almost got to have a little bit of an imagination to do it but when we can be empathetic that's when we can truly be kind because we understand exactly how that person is feeling and we're able to comfort them in a way that no one else can if they're not being empathetic to them so it's about understanding how that person is feeling and what they might need what they might need to hear and it's just being sensitive and thoughtful with your actions and your words from that point. The next point I want to talk about is patience and anger control. So this can be practiced in all relationships. So for some reason the first relationship that comes to mind is like a mother-daughter or a mother-son relationship. I see a lot of parents out nowadays where their child is having a tantrum and you see the parent just completely lose it and sometimes they swear at the child and don't even get me started on that because that really irritates me. <laughs> but you see parents lose it and it's just once you've lost your temper you've lost all control and you're never going to get through to someone by being angry you're not going to get anything out of them and sometimes when we're feeling frustrated and you just want to go to that angry response it's important to ground yourself to level zero and think what do I actually want out of this situation so in a parent's state it might be that you want the child to behave so getting angry at them is likely just going to make them more and more upset and it will make the situation escalate. Similarly in a relationship, if you and your boyfriend are both angry and you're just going at each other, there is nothing to gain through adding fuel to the fire. So the best thing you can do is sprinkle water on it. <laughs> so show a bit of gentleness. Think about the steps I've talked about before in self-reflection and forgiveness. So if you can choose to practice those personality traits over just anger and being completely impatient, then you're going to get a lot further with people and you're also going to emit that feminine energy that just softens people around you and is going to soften the world. <laughs> And the final point I want to make is that to be feminine, you need to trust. So you need to trust other people and stop trying to control everything yourself. There's nothing worse than people who micromanage and nitpick all the time and just nag at people. There's nothing worse than a nag. <laughs> we all know what we should be doing. And sometimes when people nag you all the time, it almost makes you just want to go the complete opposite way. So I think sometimes it's important to trust that other people are just as smart smart as us and have led experienced lives and we're not the only people on earth who know things and can influence others so you need to trust that other people can make good decisions so that could be something so basic that maybe your husband suggests a place to go out for dinner and you just don't think it's going to be a good place to go just trust that he is okay to make that decision he is a grown-up too and we don't need to baby men we don't need to baby everyone that we come across people are capable of making their own 
own decisions. So just having more trust in people, but also not just trust in people, just trust in the world that everything's gonna work out. So you don't need to be so uptight and try and control everything. Just try and take a little bit more of a laid back approach and know that things that are meant for you will find its way to you. That's gonna allow you to focus on your feminine energy more than anything, because you're more thinking about things that are gonna help you and allow your true self to shine rather than trying to control and nitpick everything around you to be exactly how you want it. Just by letting go of a little bit of control, you're gonna emit so much more femininity. So they are all my points for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I thought it was important to talk about these things because if you can get these things right, then how you dress or how you do your hair and your makeup, that's gonna change a very small percentage of your femininity. If you're wearing dresses every day and doing your hair and makeup really nice and then you're going out and being angry at the world and effing and blinding behind the steering wheel, then you're never gonna be that feminine influence that you want to be. But maybe you might have a day where you don't wanna do your hair, you shove it up in a bun, but you go out and you're kind to the world and you self-reflect and you're understanding, you're empathetic and you're all those things, then again, you're just gonna be such a feminine person that people wanna be around. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Video, please give it a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it and I will see you in a couple of days for my clean with me video so I'm going to wrap up this video here and I will see you in the next one